do an entire series on tractors and distractors, right? So the customer journey. Um, you know, if you've been through the digital strategy stuff, the digital strategy, the job of that is to give you the strategies or uh, help you understand how to develop the, the strategies that need to happen in order to get from point A to point B, right? But one of the things that we have to realize is that as a business, as a business, we have a strategy, we have a process that we go through in order to make sales, grow our branding, grow our business, in order to do the things that we need to do. We have a process that we have to go through, but we also need to understand that our customers and prospects also have a process that they go through. Success comes when those processes connect. Okay? So, in order for someone to become a new customer, there has to be this connection process. A lot of businesses mess it up. I see it all the time. I see it every day. Businesses messing this up. Now, think about it. It... I know you're married, you've been married a long time, Pat, but let me ask you this. If, let's say you're not married and you're a young guy, you're not married and all this, and you, you're walking down the street and you see this beautiful woman walking up to you. And you think, wow, I'd really like to go get to know her. So you gingerly walk up to her. Hey, baby. <laughs> Gingerly, that's right. <laughs> oh, baby. <yeah. laughs> hey, baby. Let's knock some boots and have some babies. <laughs> How do you think that'd turn out? Yeah. Probably wouldn't go well. If it were done to you, <laughs> being, being that, uh, being the female, how would that turn out? Not well. <laughs> Not well. Yeah. Unless there's something really wrong with you, right? <laughs> Chances are there, there may be a slap in the future, right? Agreed? Why? I mean, isn't that the end goal? We get in relationships and all that kind of stuff. You want to get married and have kids. Is that not the end goal? Okay, but the what? So what you're saying is that there's steps required. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Some pretty major ones at first. Are there? I guess, uh, again, depending on your, you, where you're at in your mind. Uh, so, sure, absolutely. Typical relationships. Um, you know, there, there was a book that was written a number of years ago about relationships and human relationships and the necessity for human relationships. And, and one of the things that it talked about was the steps that are required, right? And the book itself, I'd have to look up the name of the book again. It was a good book. Um, but one of the things that it talked about is that there's 13 steps to human relationships from the, from the whole, I don't even know you exist, to, okay, we're married and have kids, right? That there's, there's 13 steps. And, you know, one of the... One of the things that, that you think about when you do this kind of stuff is the, the first order of business, right? I, I need to introduce myself to you. Yes, yes. Name would be good, yes. Okay. But then there needs to be a conversation, right? We have to engage with one another and, and have some sort of meaningful engagement in that. And then... And then it's, okay, you know, let me invite you to a cup of coffee. And if the cup of coffee goes well, maybe I invite you to dinner, right? And if dinner goes well, maybe I invite you on a, an actual official date date. And if that goes well, maybe I'm going to invite you to go steady, as they used to say, right? Be my girlfriend or, or, or boyfriend or whatever it may be, right? And, and that goes well. And now you're, you have a learning process, right? You, you start out, you get excited about each other and... You, you've made some minor commitments, but there's no major commitments yet. And so now, now you're looking at, okay, I need to ascend the relationship to the next level. I, I need, we, we want this to get a little more serious. And so we're not just going steady, we're exclusive. Right? 
Now that we're exclusive and we're getting deeper in this relationship, the next thing I need to do is I need to propose. Right? That's kind of a high ticket process right there. Right? And then and then we get married. And you know, now as as we grow, right, we're looking at growing a family. Okay. So the problem that most businesses have is they walk up to somebody on the street and they say, hey, let's knock some boots and make some babies. They forget that people are humans and we're all built in the context of relationship, right? And if we're all built in the context of relationship, it means that what we want is a meaningful relationship of some kind. And so in business, the customer journey refers to the development of relationship from I don't even know you exist all the way down to we're married and have some kids, right? That's the journey. In business, in, 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 in personalized, there's 13 steps. In business, there are eight We're going to go through the first few of these today. The problem is, is that marketing is not a one-step process. Okay? And that's what most people treat it as. Business development is not a one-step process. But that's what we like to treat it as. We have to go through eight steps. Eight steps. Some people fall off the bandwagon during different parts of these steps. Some people stop at certain steps. But an intentional business will intentionally develop the steps in a way that they can get as many people as possible through all eight. Step number one is awareness. It's awareness. Meaning you lose 100% of the business from people that don't know you exist. A person has to be aware that your business exists before there is a possibility of them doing business with you. So we have to generate this awareness first. You think about it. Generating awareness. A, a, a dad sees an ad on Facebook for a, a new children's music camp, right? He wasn't aware before that ad popped up that there was a music camp, right? But before he could enroll his child in that music camp, he has to first be aware that it exists. That's an example of awareness. An office manager who's Google searching for some new place to buy paper, right? That's awareness. I know I need it, but I need to become aware of where to get it. A college student who's watching a video on Instagram of one of their friends just raving about this new brand of earbuds that they got, right? It's brand awareness. Awareness has to happen before a purchase can happen. It is impossible for you to make a purchase without awareness. As a brand, it is impossible for you to make a sell without awareness. So let's look at, back to when we talked about digital strategy, some of the best digital methods or digital methods that you can utilize that will generate awareness. Digital advertising being one of those. You can place highly targeted ads on social media, on Google search engines, those kind of places that target people based on their interests, their age, so on and so forth. So you can, you can hyper-target those things to be able to generate brand awareness. Search marketing, right? So digital advertising, search marketing, content marketing. Content marketing, um, interestingly enough, we'll, we'll get deeper into uh, soon. 
But content marketing, the first thing that for most people that comes to their mind is like writing blog articles and that kind of stuff. But there's more to content marketing than just writing blog articles. It's any content that you produce, right? Even your contact us page on your website technically is content marketing of some kind, right? So these things, if done appropriately, can generate awareness. Social media marketing, right? Community management. By community management, I mean things like posting on social media, things like emails, dealing with that kind of stuff, dealing with the people who, who are already interact with your brand so they can bring more people in to interact with your brand. All right? And copywriting. Copywriting is another marketing aspect that can help generate brand awareness. Now, after a person is aware that you exist, step number two is engagement. Right? Remember I said, let's, let's not do the whole uh, knocking boots, making babies thing. Right? Step two is engagement. These, these are people that know who you are now, but they don't necessarily know you like you trust you. We've heard it for years, right? A person needs to know you like you trust you before they buy from you. Right? So they are aware that you exist, but they don't necessarily know you like you trust you just yet. So the next step is to start developing that relationship. This is where you start talking with people. And by talking with people, I don't necessarily mean on the phone. You're going to engage them through some type of content that's going to provide either entertainment, information, or both. Right? information or both right and this is not a do it once and move on thing again going back to our human relationship example it's not you know hey how you doing so tell me what you like okay are you ready to knock boots and have babies now dude's a little desperate isn't he so no it's it's the whole idea of I need to have an ongoing conversation in essence with someone, right? And in order to be able to build a relationship. And, and whether they're having a relationship with you individually or with your brand, right? That relationship is necessary. So you think about this kind of stuff. This is, this is very, very important. And it's something that oftentimes gets missed out on. So some examples of that would be like a, a mom who gets an email newsletter from a daycare that's telling them all the fun things that she can do with kids over the summer break, right? They're not trying to sell her anything. They're just giving her information, right? Engaging. The owner of a, of a local brewery that actively participates in a Facebook group that's just for breweries, right? That's engagement. A father that watches a YouTube video <coughs> from Home Depot showing him how to build a birdhouse for his kid or with his kid, right? That's an engagement. You see these stuff, this stuff all the time. And it happens both online and offline, right? I think of Home Depot for, as an example. Home Depot, um, especially during the summer months, has all the little workshops and things that you can go and do and build this and build that, right? And so lots of things to do to get people involved. Right? So engagement occurs through valuable and relevant content. Content. Engagement occurs through valuable and relevant content. So, <clears throat> that leads us to methodologies. Methodologies for engagement are content marketing, social media marketing, email marketing, 
and community management. What's the first one? Content marketing. Now they're where we exist. We're beginning to engage with them, right? We're beginning to have these conversations, in essence, with the brand. Step number three is subscription. Subscription. In essence... In marketing, um, you know, this the, the person, they, they're aware that you exist. They've engaged with your brand a little bit. But one of the things that we often fail to do is we fail to get people's contact information, right? It's kind of like, again, meeting the girl on the street and, you know, and you introduce yourself and, hey, how are you? And you have a few minutes of conversation, but, oh, crap, you forgot to get her phone number, right? Well, dang, right? Opportunity cost. Okay, opportunity lost effectively. And so, again, in marketing, our goal, our goal is to collect content information so we can continue that conversation. Right? And so, subscription is the, the point in the relationship in which a person gives you their contact information. They have had enough interaction with your brand to now they have some buy-in, right? They're subscribing, in essence, to your brand or who you are. And by giving us their contact information, this gives us permission to contact them again in the future. Right? And so, oftentimes, in marketing, we... Uh, we look at this particular phase as the ethical bribe phase, right? We are the ethical bribe. It's the, the idea that we're promoting something of value, right? A valuable offer of some sort, and in return, you're giving me your contact information. In other words, I'm bribing you with something of value for contact info. Right? Now, this is, not, this is not them buying your products or services, necessarily. Yeah, it's just subscribing, in essence, into who you are, right? Whether it be email newsletters, whether it be whatever. I mean, this, some examples, of this, I mean, it could be a small business owner that signs up for a demo for a new piece of HR software, right? Puts in his contact information and, you know, signs up for the demo. It could be, you know, a, a young couple that's, that signs up for a webinar <coughs> put on by a realtor about buying your first home. Um, could be a, a, a young girl in college that fills out a form on a blog to get a free, a, a free sample of some eyeliner or blush or something like that. Right? That's where the call to action comes in, yeah. Prior to a call to action, though, you need to have engagement, right? You have to have awareness, and you need to have engagement. And so, again, the types of, um, types of marketing methodologies that generate subscription are content marketing, right? Email marketing, digital advertising, community management, Copywriting, it all has to be done well. Conversion rate optimization, right? that's a new one. Um, conversion rate optimization just simply means you, you looking at what's happening in these interactions and figuring out what you can do differently in order to increase the, the perception of value and the number of conversions that you get into subscription. Step four is conversion. Conversion. 
And this just says that if, if some of your subscribers continue to be engaged at some point, they will begin to be ready to increase their level of commitment. Right? You've had coffee. Right? You've had dinner. So now are we ready to increase our level of commitment? This is where they actually begin to trust you, and it shows. So this person is now ready to increase their level of commitment, and they will do so in one of two ways. They will increase their level of commitment in time or in money. Right? Only two things in life you can spend, time and money. Both are of value. All of this could happen in one transaction. Gotcha. Okay. It's possible right. for all of it to happen in one it, transaction. It depends on the personality of each person. It depends, on the, it depends on the personality of each person and where the person is in their buying process, where they are in their level of awareness, um, prior to an, uh, an awareness of you. Nice. Right? <clears throat> It speeds up the process, right? But there's a lot of ways that you can mess that up. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Because I'll get that urgency, and then boy, you know, you've already got the purchase. You've already, I mean, within moments, I mean, it's, it's such a short amount of time. And they're already, they've already purchased, they've already obtained their, they've got the subscription, they've got them in the, the CRM, and then from there, that management of that relationship sort of. Management of that relationship, but you also have to understand that in those types of, that's an e-commerce transaction, in that, that is, and for a large percentage of your people, will be the only transaction they will make with you, right? Unless you do something to facilitate more than that. That actually is a conversion, which when we get to further down the road, we'll talk about ascension, which is what's necessary in that particular manner in order to be able to get them as repeat buyers, right? <clears throat> For most people to understand, you know, they need to understand that conversion, conversion is a purchase, um, it, it's a commitment of time and or money. So it may be a one-time time transaction to try you out, of buying a product or service that you have, but it also may be just spending some time with you, getting on the phone, just saying, "Hey, you know, let's let's chat. Why do I why do I need to trust you, right? What do I need to get out of you?" It may be a, a consultation, right? So, in like the cleaning and janitorial world, it may be someone going from, "Okay, I've seen all this stuff. Let me call to get a quote," right? So they're going to spend their time with you on that. And so this is, this is the important part because this is the initial customer acquisition transaction. Okay? And remember, we can acquire customers with time, not just with money. A lot of times as business we focus on, people um, have to spend money in order to be a customer. They have to spend money in order to be a customer. But you know, one of the things that I've done in the past, and I haven't done in a while, probably should look at that again, but I've run classes, right? Free classes that the general public could take and I target people within certain markets and so on and so forth. And I do that so that they can spend time, right? I give something of value, they're buying into it and then we're spending time together to build that relationship and often cases, a percentage of those people will then become customers, right? That's actually how you became right, a client. And so, that's that conversion process, okay? Now, it's the reason why, you know, companies like GoDaddy will give you a domain name for $2.95, right? Because they understand that the most expensive part of your business is going to be customer acquisition, right? It's always more expensive to get a new customer than it is to retain an old customer, right? So, um, Vistaprint does, you know, you get 500 business cards for like seven, eight, nine dollars, whatever it is, right? They know they're gonna lose money on that deal, okay? They're going to lose money on that deal, and it's okay, 
for them to lose a little money on that deal because they're going to get you to buy in, in essence, as a customer. Then they can focus on ascending you into additional purchases you know, and, and things that they want you to do, right? So the goal is to get of the conversion is to get a new customer. Okay, profits we're not concerned about at the moment. Profits come later. We just want to get someone as a customer. Okay. So uh, some examples of this could also be a, a, a business owner, small business owner, buying a, a business management consultant's book for eight bucks, right? Okay, you know this guy maybe may charge hundreds of dollars an hour. Right, but they're going to buy his book for eight bucks. Well, they bought in. Now they're a customer of some kind, right? Um, children of elderly parents taking a tour of a retirement home. Okay, they're buying into it. They're spending the time, right, to take the tour. Yeah. Somebody buying a twenty dollars teeth whitening service off Groupon. Right. Okay, that they're going to lose money on that twenty dollars teeth whitening service on Groupon, right? Guaranteed. Okay, Groupon <clears throat> and a lot of businesses don't even understand the model of Groupon. Groupon is by design going to cost you money, right? Whatever service or, or product you sell, Groupon is going to cost you money. To do it, but the job is the the job is conversion into multi buyer, right? Groupon's job is to help with a single buyer, right? And, they, and your job then is to convert them to a multi-buyer. So the goal of that transaction, whatever the initial transaction and the conversion pro step is, is not to make huge profit. It's just to get them bought in, right, to who you are, what you do, right? Get them as a customer. And so, again, digital marketing processes that generate conversions. Digital advertising content marketing, email marketing, um, copywriting, search marketing. These are all things that generate this stuff. Now, notice one of the things that I did not directly say is website on any of these steps. Content marketing includes your website, but your website can have multiple purposes and should participate in multiple steps, okay? So as we get deeper into all this, the one thing I want you to think in your mind is that a website is, is the hub, right? Your other processes should have spokes that come out of the hub, but they're not all independent, right? They should all be related back to that centralized hub. Make sense? All right, so next time we'll get into the other four steps of the customer journey and what's required in order to get these high-paying and frequent customers.